Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome to stage Jean-François Salle. Thank you for joining us. We can sit, we can stand, we can move around as much as we like, but for now, please join me. Thank you, Chris. It's a pleasure to have you with us, Jean-François. Jean-François, I wanted to, to get into it. Um, as I mentioned, um, we're living in a time of, of, of ongoing disruption. And it, it almost seems like every time we speak in this industry and there's a hope that something will get a bit better, <laughs> something else comes along. And as I mentioned, I, don't, I think that's probably part of, part of the new reality we're facing. Um, how has this constant disruption uh, changed how you're leading supply chain management uh, at Group Renault in this constant crisis mode? Okay. Uh, first, uh, Chris, I would like to, to thank you for uh, uh, this uh, time. Uh, as you mentioned, it's a uh, long time we have not been uh, gathering physically, and uh, so that, that's very important, and it's uh, a big honor uh, to be there with you today and share a, a, few, uh, a few ideas uh, in the context and as you know, and as you mentioned, the, the context is uh, completely um, uh, not normal. And you said it will not be normal anymore. And that's why I, I mentioned uh, some time ago in a, in a paper with you that uh, I believed there is no new normal. There's a kind of uh, never a new normal. And indeed, we are uh, more in a kind of, uh, of um, situation where we are managing a supply chain of, uh, of chaos in the sense that uh, we are experiencing uh, massive events uh, in a part of the world that can, have, uh, that can spread effects uh, in all the supply everywhere, uh, everywhere else in the, in the world. And we have to face that. Uh, obviously, the, the companies, the, the groups, rely on supply chain to, uh, to support and uh, ensure the, the business continuity. Uh, and that's why we have to, uh, to adapt very fast. And the key, I think the, the key uh, word there, and uh, that's what we, uh, we did experience in the past two years, is how to adapt very fast, very quickly, uh, in order to cope with those uh, disruptions. Supply chain of chaos. You gave me a great headline last year. I think you've given me another great one, so thank you for that. Uh, is it possible to gain more control as we've kind of put in the title of our session. Can we regain more supply chain control uh, in the supply chain of chaos? We will have to. We will have to, uh, to keep control, and uh, that's basically the job of uh, all the people in, the, in this room, uh, to, uh, to, to keep the control and make sure that uh, what, what, uh, whatever the, the events, uh, we keep the, the situation under control. Uh, and for this, we are relying on, on different, uh, different things. One is the, our organizations and the fact that uh, our organization have to demonstrate resilience. Resilience is more than robustness. In a way, it's uh, how to uh, be able to reinvent itself uh, according to the situation. And uh, we'll talk about this, I'm sure, more and more, the, the fact that we, we need uh, to uh, share the information, to have more information uh, available and shared uh, throughout the supply and rely on, on digital tools for that. I have the feeling to say that um, any supply chain without visibility, without understanding of data, would inevitably be a supply chain of chaos, even, even without the disruption we're seeing now. We talked about it last year in the, in the interview. Uh, Renault has been working to overhaul many of its systems uh, over, over several years, from TMS to, to other systems, now to, let's say, more sophisticated work with connected data. I believe there's an project, important project with Google in the cloud. Can you give the audience uh, and our artists um, a bit more of a sense of this journey that, that you've been on? Yes, obviously it's not, uh, it's not unique to uh, Renault. Every, uh, any um, OEM uh, in, in automotive uh, is using and relying on uh, um, big systems, legacy systems that run the, 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 the production, um, the MRP, the, the TMS, etc. All, uh, all these acronyms <laughs> uh, covering the different process uh, of uh, uh, supplying parts to a, to a plant, of programming our parts, uh, our plants, uh, requesting parts to our suppliers, transporting, etc. But until now, and until the, the, the last, uh, the recent years, all these systems were kind of uh, patchwork uh, with probably uh, not uh, a lot of consistency and not the opportunity to, uh, 
uh, to share and, and really to, um, to uh, use the data uh, on a global scope. So our journey was, uh, was first to, uh, to make sure that uh, there is a, a good structure of the data, what we call ontology of, uh, of data, and this is an investment for a company uh, to make sure that the, the, the architecture and structure of data uh, is uh, properly done in the way that afterwards you, uh, we, can, uh, we can really uh, use them and, uh, and get the, the most benefit of it. Um, we have been, uh, throughout the, the years, developing uh, more and more uh, use cases and tools uh, from the, from the um, uh, tracking of our, of our uh, parts inside the supply with our suppliers, the, the tracking of uh, transport, uh, and then uh, developing more sophisticated, tool, uh, sophisticated tools uh, in a complete integrated control tower. Mm. Mm. When we, when we look at this, this, this work, has it already helped you in the wake of some of the crises that we've been talking about? Indeed, yes, indeed. Uh, when we started the, the situation with COVID, uh, when you have the, uh, the possibility to immediately uh, spot uh, some, uh, some difficulties in a part of a country and know at the same time where it may uh, spread into, into your plants at what, uh, and uh, at what time it's going to be an impact in your plants, uh, that's a real, uh, a real um, uh, benefit and, uh, and advantage. Uh, now we are more and more developing also the, the tracking of our transport. Uh, we have 100% coverage of the, of the tracking of our trucks uh, throughout Europe, uh, which is also um, a big, uh, big advantage to be able to anticipate the problems, uh, anticipate the, the, the shortage, and step by step, we are uh, developing uh, new, uh, new activities around this uh, to integrate uh, external data, data from uh, what uh, we call community, uh, community data, for instance, on the tracking. We, as you know, we work with Shipeo, yeah. uh, which is uh, our partner on the, on the tracking and probably on the market, one of the, uh, I guess, the, the, the most uh, accurate one uh, to give uh, ETA. Uh, and, we en we are enriching those data with uh, uh, external events. Uh, of course, everybody can think about, uh, about weather, about uh, blockage on the borders, that kind of stuff, uh, in order to give you a part by part uh, on a very accurate uh, level, uh, very uh, precise level, uh, the situation of uh, any parts and the, and the risk that can uh, affect uh, one part or the other. With this set of data layers, um, and often in real time, collecting, is it, is it moving into a, a realm of artificial intelligence? Are you implementing AI solutions to help with these more predictive aspects of the solution? Yes, that, that, that's obviously the, the next step, and reaching those, all those data and, uh, and um, powering uh, with uh, AI tools. Uh, it can be an operational research tool in case of uh, simulation, but also AI. Uh, we have the possibility, yes, to, uh, to anticipate the, the situations, to predict uh, what may happen on, on, the, on the flows, on the supply. This is very useful for feeding the plants, but also very useful for the, our customers when we deliver the, the vehicles uh, to, to give them uh, better information on what's going to be uh, the actual uh, delivery date. Mm. As, as we talked about the new never normal, um, there's no, no quick return. When we look at things like material shortages, higher transport and logistics costs, which, which seem to be becoming more of a permanent feature, energy costs um, certainly um, at a high and rising. When we look at these now, likely stretched over a longer term, I mean, what are some of the uh, impacts you see that having on the way Renault purchases, chooses, designs its supply chain looking at? Well, uh, it, w when we look at the, the past uh, year, uh, frankly speaking, it's been, uh, a, again, another chaos on the, on the maritime freight and, frankly, uh, the, the cost of containers. Uh, I'm sure many people there could experience the, the situation. Uh, the cost of freight has uh, completely exploded. Uh, and in some cases, it's, it's moving the lines on the economic balance between sourcing with a quite a low cost of production in some area, and, uh, and now the transport cost uh, that is uh, booming. Um, 
when you when you add the risk of uh, of supply and the, the service rates uh, that we are experiencing at the moment, uh, meaning that if we want to avoid any disruption in the plants, we need to increase the, the safety stocks. Uh, so it means more capital uh, uh, mobilized, more uh, cash mobilized in the flows uh, to, to secure the, the supply. Uh, and eventually, when we have the, the taxes coming on the CO2 uh, on the freight, yes, it's moving the lines. And um, now we are more and more considering uh, a strategy around uh, industrial clusters to uh, have more, uh, um, I would say, local, uh, local supply means a, 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 good, uh, a good portfolio of parts uh, more localized, closer to the, to the, plant, to the plants. And uh, on the other side, when we keep uh, some uh, low-cost production uh, countries for some parts, make sure that this is uh, in a consistent channel to optimize the, the supply. Yes, it's moving the lines. Yes. So certainly moving towards localization, as you put it, more regionalized areas of, of supply chain and, and different inventory strategies in cases as well. Um, what do you think that, that means for, if we bring it down to logistics network engineering, supply chain design, what, what are some of the impacts that that, that shift will, will start to have? On, on, the, on the design, uh, obviously, it's, uh, we, we are going to rationalize and, and look for more simplicity in the, in the flows. Uh, less uh, spreading the, the, the sourcing uh, uh, in any place, but uh, considering also uh, channels of, uh, of supply where we can massify more the, the, the transport. And um, well, th this makes me uh, think about uh, the case of, of Europe, where we, we also, in, in the, uh, with the objectives of uh, reducing uh, CO2 impact, etc., we also need to, uh, to have uh, massified flows on uh, transports like uh, short sea, but also rail. And uh, this requires probably to have a, a strategy of sourcing that is aligned with this kind of, uh, of uh, request. So, so a sourcing that is actually strongly considering the use of these more sustainable or more, um, yes. let's say, con yes. consolidated transport. Yes, yeah. so the, and reflecting to what you said at the, the introduction, uh, probably it's reinforcing again the role of, uh, of supply chain and uh, the fact that all the inputs uh, that the, the supply leaders have to give to their, to their company, to the other functions of finance, sales, production, are more and more key uh, to, uh, to give an orientation and to, to decide on the sourcing, for instance. Yeah, and, and I wanted to come back, firstly, just for anyone standing in the back, there, is, there are some seats here. It's great to see such a full room. Um, if you want to filter through, please, please do so if, if, you, if you want to find a seat. Um, but, but coming back to, to that, that point, Jean-Francois, because it, it, it's not new in this industry to talk about total landed costs or, or you know, trying to consider the, um, the, the things that, you know, that, that we would consider these costs and risks into it. But it does seem as though we have ended up, nonetheless, with very fragile supply chains um, uh, over time. So is this really now um, a change for functions like supply chain management in influencing manufacturing, purchasing, and in terms of the organization, in terms of how you're seeing that within Renault and perhaps across the alliance in places, is that now a, a, a quite significant change to what we have seen, let's say, 10 years ago? Yes, yes, obviously, and again, you, you mentioned that uh, the, the visibility of supply is uh, much more important now because uh, many uh, leaders understood the, the importance and the, the, the key role of supply uh, on the business. Uh, and obviously, within the, each company, within the, the groups, uh, the role of supply is, uh, is key. We talked about uh, sourcing decisions. That, that can be one aspect. Uh, other aspects are obviously around the sales and operation planning. Uh, and the past, uh, past years with different crises have shown that the, the importance of this, uh, this process of SNOP, uh, the fact that uh, the, the, all the functions had to, uh, to adapt themselves on a very, um, on, on much quicker uh, cycle and around supply. And there, supply has to give the, the inputs, the right inputs, uh, to make the group decide and take the good decisions uh, according, to the, according to the situation of, uh, of supply, of short, possible shortages, 
uh, according to the, also the, the profitability, how to give uh, orientation, arbitration of um, allocation of uh, this or these parts in order to, uh, to maximize the, or to keep the profitability and maximize the profitability uh, for the group. So the, the, the supply is definitely at the core of the, the business, core act of activities. Uh, and sometimes we, we have to, uh, or many people consider supply as uh, simply the, the logistic role, the, the transportation cross-dock role. But this is far more important uh, in terms of uh, uh, global activity uh, with, the, with the finance, with the, uh, the, the sales, with production. Uh, in order to, uh, to have a holistic view on the, the situation, to collect the, the, the signals from the, from the market, but also from the supply, and provide the right inputs to all the functions, orchestrate, and propose, not decide, but propose the, the different scenarios that will help the group to uh, uh, add to the, the right decisions and the, the right profitability. So as, as you say, the SNLP sitting very much at a, at a central central role here. It sounds like that I, I've heard, heard often of, of uh, daily task force sort of meetings in the industry right now. Lots of board level communication, I'm sure, wanting to know whether it's chasing down semiconductor parts or identifying specific containers. Um, do you see uh, SNLP, though, becoming, you know, as you're alluding to, more strategic than this task force. This, this seems to be implying that these data signals need to be read out longer than what's coming next month or next week or yes, tomorrow. The, the, the point <laughs> is that it's, uh, it's sometimes difficult to, uh, to make uh, SNOP and forecast on uh, 12 months or 18 months when uh, many people don't know what's going to happen in two weeks from now. Yeah. Uh, so probably some, uh, in some cases, war rooms, uh, task force, uh, did prevail on the SNOP. However, uh, a company cannot, and automotive especially, cannot uh, navigate uh, and, and turn right, uh, left, uh, overnight and every week. Uh, so we need to, to keep uh, a direction, and we still need to, uh, to give forecast, and, and all the chain, all our suppliers need to have this, this forecast. The point is how to adapt uh, SNOP in this context. It means that um, we need to work probably on shorter cycles with a, a different frequency. And SNOP has to adapt in the sense that uh, it's less and less uh, giving the, the answer to uh, the, the production answer to a sales request, but it's more and more a continuous discussion uh, dialogue between sales and production and supply uh, to adapt mutually on what can be done and what cannot be done. We are moving from, a, from a, an environment, a situation where the, we were living on, on availability of parts, managing stocks, etc. And we are going more and more in a society of uh, managing the resource and managing the, the shortages. So that's kind of, of change of paradigm. And obviously, we have to, uh, to adapt to this. And more and more, probably, we have to uh, be in a situation where we anticipate the, the, the possible difficulties, shortages, in order to adapt the, the, the sales and the proposal to the, to the customers. What about the role <clears throat> that your partners can play in that? I mean, th that and obviously is picking up signals in the wider market, working across the organization, using, using right data. <clears throat> but, but what about in terms of perhaps bringing logistics partners, supplier partners closer into that? Is that also happening? Is that a, is that a strategic role as well? Yes, yes. Uh, we, we, have, uh, we have both situations. Huh? We, we are working on a very open market uh, and buying transport. Uh, uh, very openly to a, a wide range of uh, actors. And at the same time, we also develop uh, uh, partner, uh, partnering uh, with some uh, major, uh, major actors. We started on the, on the sea freight uh, and uh, have a close um, uh, relation with CMA, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, we, we are open on this, uh, to, to, to these uh, partnerships and uh, I would say to these uh, opportunities, case by case, 
uh, to see what, what can be done uh, to improve the, the efficiency of the logistics. And it's not only, in this sense, uh, what I think we, we have to do is not only consider a contract of transports, but how can we, uh, as partners, join activities, skills, and forces to improve the global supply? Um, in some cases, the, the, the transport companies have uh, good skills and, uh, and tools for, uh, for tracking uh, in terms of uh, control tower, etc. That's a good point that we can, uh, we can use. And we can also, on our side, uh, bring some, um, some benefits or some uh, activities that can interest the, the transport. Mm. I want to make it clear as well, we, we are open for, for questions, so if, uh, I will gladly use all of the time, don't worry, um, but if there are any questions for Jean-Francois, just put your hand up and we'll have some mics going around the room and we'll, we'll, we can bring you into the, into the conversation. One of the things I, I wanted to, uh, to turn to though, whilst the audience thinks of some questions, is we're talking about influencing these, these decisions um, over, over a longer period of time. Um, obviously you can't, it, it, well, it's difficult to re-engineer a supply chain overnight uh, when there's fixed assets and things. But we also have a unique situation, I, I feel, where uh, with the electrification and, and, and gigafactories and let's say new elements of the supply chain perhaps coming in and being built faster and at a faster pace than we've seen in the past, that this is perhaps quite a unique moment uh, to really get it right now. And is that, is that, can you talk a little, obviously Renault is doing things in, in the north of France with the electricity and integrating clusters. Perhaps this is already an example of what you were talking about earlier. Um, so is this now an important time to really get it right? Uh, a, a, a once in a generation, perhaps once in a century chance to get it right. Yes, absolutely. It's, uh, uh, as you say, it's, uh, the change is not uh, happening overnight. Huh? We are uh, talking about massive, uh, massive investments, etc. but Yes, electrification is, uh, is an opportunity, we, and in a, in a way we are lucky uh, to be at the right timing. Mm. Uh, and what's happening in, in north of France is the, the creation of uh, electricity, uh, which is a, a pool of uh, uh, three plants uh, that are producing vehicles, but also uh, powertrain uh, components. And we are installing a, a gigafactory of uh, batteries uh, at the side of the, of the vehicle plant. And this, uh, this site will be, uh, in the coming years, uh, one of the most, if not the, the, the more important in volume, sites of, of uh, production for electric vehicles. And in this, uh, at this occasion, yes, we are uh, redesigning, rethinking the, the full footprint of, uh, of supply. Uh, for the, the parts that part of them are new, some uh, other are quite, uh, quite classic, but we are completely redesigning the, the footprint of, of suppliers uh, to create an actual ecosystem, industrial ecosystem, around the electricity. That's going to change, uh, obviously, the, the, the logistic around it. We intend to reduce um, average of 150 kilometers uh, the distance between uh, suppliers and the plant. Um, and that's going to, uh, to improve uh, by 16-17% the, the CO2 footprint, reduce the CO2 footprint uh, of logistics uh, simply by the, the, the footprint. Of course, on CO2 we are not, uh, uh, we are not getting stuck on the 16%, uh, we are going to, to yeah. go further. But this redesign uh, is bringing uh, real benefits on, uh, on logistics, yes. Yeah, so, as you mentioned, great. We have a question in the front if we, could, if we can pull the microphone. But just to reflect, um, as you said earlier, the, 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 these distances are now considered, the potential of what transport mode being used is considered, so really quite a change in how that decision is being shaped. Yeah. On the transportation, yes. Yeah. On, the, on, on the transportation mode, yes, we, we are uh, working, uh, of course, to, uh, to improve, and this is a must, huh, to, to improve the... The, the portion, the ratio of uh, rail uh, on, the, on the transport, inbound and outbound. Uh, at this time, it's, it's, quite, uh, it's quite low, but there is no, in Europe, uh, no alternative than improving the use of rail uh, if we all together want to, uh, to uh, cope with the objectives uh, in CO2 reduction by 2030 and then 2050. Mm. 
Um, we are developing also alternatives, alternative fuel like uh, biogas, biofuel. The question will be the availability of uh, biogas <laughs> uh, in the context, because uh, that, that will be uh, necessary to compensate also some, uh, some sourcings that are getting difficult. Um, and uh, then alternative uh, energy like uh, electricity on electricity still uh, it's, uh, it's a bit uh, at, the, at the beginning, at the edge. We are looking carefully on what uh, our friends in Switzerland yeah. are doing on the retail. Uh, and developing uh, hydrogen uh, is another alternative. We have some, um, some program on this. Uh, I think that there could be some good opportunity in the coming years that will require big investments. It's again at, at the beginning. But real realistically uh, for now and in the five to eight years, uh, we need to go for biogas and rail to reduce the, the CO2. I have a question in the front, if you could just say your name and company. Definitely. Greg Ombach, Airbus. Uh, Chris, thank you very much uh, for, for, for leading this discussion. And Jean-Francois, I have a question. You mentioned uh, about these challenges which from logistic perspective you guys are facing. And you mentioned, of course, about the, the chaos which is coming from, the, from Asia and also, of course, what we have in Europe. You mentioned a lot of about the CO2 challenges which is going to have impact the uh, global footprint, how you guys are going to operate or how we are going to operate in the future. Uh, and also about the transition towards more electric vehicle and electrification for electrification. And my question goes in direction about how much Renault is going to integrate themselves themselves in direction of the vertical business model. Because I saw recently, a couple of months ago, Renault already announced that it's going to invest more in the direction of power electronics, own development and production. Uh, you're investing as well in direction of the batteries. It means de developing their own batteries. Uh, not, uh, not just systems, but going to the cells and securing the raw material. Are Renault going to look in five, ten years from now like Tesla, which is top-down integrated, or BYD, or you are going to try to play the, something between horizontal and vertical business model? Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, obviously, we, um, we, we are looking to uh, integrate more, uh, but integration is, uh, is in many cases uh, <coughs> with, with partners. On the batteries, in the case of uh, electricity, it's a part, uh, partnership with Envision. And uh, we have another part, uh, partnership with Vercor, who is a startup uh, on a new generation of uh, batteries with much more uh, 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 energy per, uh, uh, per kilogram. Um, and on the, on the batteries themselves, on the materials, yes, we are also uh, partnering with, uh, with some companies uh, that are able to, uh, to secure uh, the uh, availability, the, the capacity on the materials. You know that uh, we are facing on some technologies, uh, probably some, uh, some uh, not difficulties, but uh, it's going to be tense. On the, on the availability of the raw materials uh, around the world. So uh, the, the booming and the, the ramp up of electrification uh, request that we look carefully at uh, the, the way we are going to secure uh, the, the uh, supply of this uh, material all along the chain. That's true for electrification, you know, with the, with the batteries. Uh, it's true for the um, uh, components of uh, electric components, power, uh, elect uh, electronic of power in the vehicles, and uh, Renault has signed a partnership with uh, ST uh, Micro on this. Um, and uh, it's true also in the uh, more generally on the uh, all electronic uh, that goes into the into the vehicle. And uh, we also, and the, the, the medias that we have, uh, connectivity and medias we have to develop uh, on, on the vehicle. So on all these areas that are the most critical, uh, we are uh, developing strategies uh, to make sure that with some partners, uh, we can uh, get the, the, the right level of, um, uh, or the state of the art in terms of, um, of technology, but also the, the availability and the capacity of the components and the parts. 
Thank you. So we've got a, um, well, we had, all right, there's one. We'll do, go there, and then we have a question in the front. So once you do that, can you bring the mic forward? But we'll go to Adam first. Say your name and company. Yes, yeah, so Adam Mishak, uh, Yazaki. Uh, Jean-Francois, I have uh, maybe two questions. One is related at the beginning of your speech. You, you said a lot of about the tools, the data collections, and the visibility of the components. Uh, how those tools are supporting your suppliers also to, uh, to get the same, I would say, um, uh, functionality of, 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 of what you are trying to achieve? So uh, on, the, on the, the components and more generally on the parts, uh, we, have, uh, we have developed uh, since uh, uh, several years some tools to, that gives us the, the visibility of uh, uh, parts uh, stock along the supply between our suppliers, 6,000 suppliers around the world, and uh, 40 plants uh, production plants that we have uh, in the world. Uh, so that, that's important uh, uh, tool in the sense that we have a high diversity of uh, components uh, everywhere. Uh, the, the lead time and supply chains are um, more or less long. Uh, we stock that can be our, our part in transit. And when you have the, it's, it's impossible to manage this uh, at a uh, human level. Uh, one, one person, even an army of people, cannot manage this uh, uh, level of complexity and this level of diversity. Uh, so these tools are helping us to give us uh, uh, dynamically, uh, at any moment, the situation of uh, the, the uh, parts available, the stock available, everywhere in the world. And that helps us to anticipate decisions on the planning of the vehicle plants or powertrain plants uh, that we have around the world. Yeah, my question was more like, what is it if those tools are supporting also your suppliers in anticipating, for example, the, the stock level, etc., or is it just your own operating you know, process you know, that, that you anticipate? Um, sorry, we, we, <coughs> we take into account the, the full uh, supply. I'm not sure I understand exactly. your question. I mean, but tier one and, uh, well, maybe yes, maybe. it's tier one, and uh, we are also integrating the tier N, now tier N suppliers, uh, in terms of uh, mapping, localization of all the tier Ns with the BOM associated uh, tier one, tier N. Okay. Well, the second question is related. You mentioned that uh, yeah, we have the rocket science. Uh, prices of the, of the transport, you know, going up and that, et cetera, et cetera. Is there any uh, Renault-Nissan program to, to work with your suppliers also to, to mitigate that uh, somehow? Uh, with which suppliers? Transport suppliers? Yeah, well, transport and <laughs> direct suppliers, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, the experience we have on the maritime is that uh, uh, discussion can be, uh, can be tough. <laughs> but we have good discussion. And uh, again, uh, with uh, CMA, I know Seva is there, uh, we have a good, uh, good discussion and, and good, uh, uh, good partnership. So I had, I had one more audience question I'll take here. Yeah, Arjun Bongard, uh, Bongard Media. Um, <clears throat> given the challenges you face in, in supply chain and the volatility of, the, of the, the automotive market, I'd be curious to hear whether you actually, uh, what your operating budget looks like for, your, for the operation that you manage. I mean, do you have more money this year to spend than the last year? <laughs> or are you subject to the, the general cost cutting <coughs> necessities in the industry? I should ask the question to my boss. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay too. <laughs> No, uh, the, the question, is the, the, well, the answer is that uh, we, we are not uh, having budgets uh, that, that can expand uh, indefinitely. Uh, uh, you know that automotive is not uh, globally uh, a business that uh, is developing uh, very high margins, uh, except one or two actors uh, on the market. Uh, the, the best are probably around 10 uh, percent which is not our case at the moment. Uh, and uh, it means that 
the, the impact of, uh, of uh, logistic cost, but also on raw materials, etc., can be uh, very, uh, very uh, severe on the, on the global business and operating, uh, operating profit. And that's why we are uh, thinking to how to, uh, to uh, react, to redesign, to change the way we, uh, we supply our parts to, uh, to our plants. Part of it is a is kind of a redesign of the footprint of uh, suppliers. Uh, part of it is uh, relying on uh, more classical or a bit less classical uh, tools, uh, like improving uh, again and again the, the filling rate, optimizing the routes, and uh, developing uh, digital that can also provide uh, good tips and, and good uh, ways to optimize and reduce our cost. So it's uh, yes, there is a, a wave of overcost. On the other side, there is continuous work to, uh, to optimize and improve the situation of, uh, of cost uh, of logistics. We're living week by week, day, month by month, day by day in, in periods of disruption. Um, but do you already anticipate what, what the next, what some of the risks are that we're facing right now? And are you trying to work in, in any ways to mitigate them? What can we do now to mitigate them? Oh, it's difficult to, uh, to tell you what's going to happen <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in a few weeks. Uh, it's clear the situation in China is, uh, is quite uh, worrying for, for, for many people at the, at the moment because uh, we already know the, the troubles and disruptions around Shanghai uh, and all the, the logistic chain um, ahead of the charging the, the, the containers is uh, provoking, but we, we don't exactly know where it's going to spread in China. So uh, that, that's a, a concern. Uh, and obviously, uh, we have uh, many other uh, areas of concerns. Um, globally, the energy cost will uh, continue to, uh, to be at high levels. Second, uh, there will be an uh, unbalance uh, between the, the demand and the capacity on the, on the logistics because the, the full system globally is disorganized. Uh, it's true on the, on the sea freight, but it's true also on the uh, inland transport Trucking, as we know that uh, we are facing and will face uh, dri truck driver shortage uh, in, uh, in coming, uh, coming months. So, yes, situation uh, will remain uh, tense yeah. and challenging. I know we're running slightly over, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up in a, in a minute before we bring our, our next panel on. Um, it's uh, too good an opportunity to say, to not, not, not feed the questions that we, that we have in mind here. Is there more room? I mean, Renault, Nissan, and Mitsubishi worked, I think, strongly in logistics longer, perhaps even in other areas, uh, particularly in Europe, where there, there's a, a unified function. Um, in terms of supply chain, in terms of the areas that we're talking about, is there further room within the alliance? And obviously, the alliance has had other areas where it's perhaps fractured more. That's, that's not a, a, no secret. But it, when we look at the supply chain, is there, is there other areas where we can go further? Yes, it's, uh, it's obviously open. We are working more and more on the, the risk sensing activities yeah. uh, with a, a, a footprint of Nissan, Renault, Mitsubishi that is uh, very complementary around the, the globe. Um, so that's one example. It's very open. Yeah, yeah absolutely. OK. Um, Let's sort of close a bit more with your, your vision. I mean, it's, as you say, it's hard to, it's, it may seem hard sometimes to look past the next week. And we had a few, a few comments from um, the online audience sort of reflecting on the fact that shutdowns are coming with short notice. It's very difficult to, to communicate uh, this to tier ones and twos, logistics providers. But if we can try to look beyond the, the, the crisis that no doubt will hit us next week, um, what's your vision for automotive supply chain management? in the next three, five years? Um, and, and where do we want, want to be when we're talking to this audience in 2027? Well, um, I think it's going to be a, a supply chain uh, uh, that has to be definitely uh, more end-to-end -end connected and digitalized. Uh, that's uh, a must uh, to uh, face the, the coming challenges. Uh, we need to be... Uh, uh, supply chain that, that will be at the forefront of uh, sustainability. We are managing uh, complex uh, flows, uh, massive, uh, massive uh, business and activities, and we have to uh, uh, take the lead on this. 
And to take the lead on this, probably we need to develop more uh, cooperation uh, between the different stakeholders. Uh, as the, the challenges are big on, uh, on uh, CO2 reduction and sustainability in, in general, in that sense, uh, we have in some ways to organize on the, the use of the assets, the flows, um, and the, the one way to massively reduce the, the CO2 is to uh, better use the, the means and the transport. Um, and the second one, to, uh, to be more cooperative, uh, to develop the, the innovation uh, that will be needed on this, uh, on this uh, challenge. Uh, new technologies, uh, but also on uh, existing ones, again on the, on the rail for instance, uh, it has to be open for more, uh, more cooperation between the, the different stakeholders. Jean-Francois, uh, it, it, it's been a great opportunity to, to share uh, th these insights with you, talk about regaining supply chain control in the new never world normal or in the supply chain of chaos. Um, but I think uh, we, we've shown a good way. There's lots of opportunities as well as these challenges. I, we have a packed room here. I'm sure many will be anxious and interested to hear more. Um, I'm glad you're with us for, for today and obviously can continue the discussion. Um, I'm going to briefly, in a, in a moment, bring on our, our other panelists. I'd also invite you um, to, we'll be talking, picking up on some of these issues. So if you're in the audience here, by all means, um, please be, feel free to join in on aspects of our discussion where, where it's relevant. But for now, please, thank you very much for, for taking the time to come and joining and speaking to our audience today. It's been thank a real you, pleasure. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you.